There's so much written about the power of the mind. The mind-body connection is so powerful, which is why techniques like mindfulness, yoga, and meditation are used more and more. And it's imagining your heart and envisioning yourself breathing in through your heart and breathing out through your heart. And when you do that, you can also add to it a feeling of gratitude. And for instance, think about somebody you love or something that you are grateful for. The average person thinks about 72 to 74,000 thoughts per day, many of them automatic, unconscious. That's a lot of thoughts. And I see actually a lot of people in my private practice who come to me because of issues with thinking. Thoughts also are what lead to depression. Thoughts also are what lead to anxiety. Cognitive distortions are something that every human being has to some degree. And this is the way in which our thoughts actually could be different from the reality. So masks are our false identities. And masks can come in so many different ways. Sometimes we could be happy but actually show that we are not so happy because we're afraid people will be jealous or people will feel as though you know, a little uncomfortable, or the opposite. We can actually be deeply insecure or sad inside, but actually put on a happy face and really hide that. But we learn early on that masks sometimes are necessary because to show our true vulnerable selves isn't safe. So we adopt these masks as a form of a shield or an armor, but only later realizing that they keep us from our own truth. But whatever we resist persists. And actually, those things that we disavow and push away, we then project onto others and see those things in other people. And often, it's precisely those things that annoy us most about other people. So how can you find your shadow side? You ask yourself, what annoys me most about other people? And that's your shadow side. In suppressing our darkness, we're also suppressing our greatest light. By denying our ugliness, we lessen our beauty. By denying our fear, we minimize our courage. By denying our greed, we reduce our generosity. When a projection is reclaimed, it's like a revelation of the self. And here it is ascribed the ancient Greek aphorism, know thyself. The phrase was later expounded upon by Socrates, who taught that the unexamined life is not worth living. The ancient Greeks greatly valued the power inherent in self-knowledge and looking within for truth. And then there's that still quiet voice within, which is the voice of our soul, our intuition. And that's that little voice. That's the path to authenticity. Fernando Broca was one of those shamans. And he told me that his definition of soul was that each soul is comprised of two parts. One part is that which connects us to everybody and everything. People sometimes say that we're one unified soul, and that's what they mean. And the other part of the soul is that which encapsulates our own uniqueness. So the way in which we use our unique and individuals in individual skills, talents, abilities, interests in the service of the world. In that way, our soul is our uniqueness and also our interconnectedness. And our intuition is the voice of that soul. Balance to this man meant working an 18 hour day almost every day, often skipping meals and not getting enough sleep according to our definition of that because he loved his job so much and felt such a sense of purpose that this is what he got his meaning from. This was balance, and this man lived till 105. I show this because what everybody needs to feel good and healthy and take care of themselves and therefore be able to take good care of others is really, really different. And there really isn't a prescription for good self-care, even though many people can give you lists of what it means to have a balanced life. So the idea with this is the importance of looking within yourself and knowing yourself to understand what does self-care mean to you.